Should I sell my house now or later? Given the health crisis that we're in right now, and by the way, we are still in a lockdown, at least here in Calgary, Alberta, I've been getting a lot of calls from people asking me, should I sell my house now or later? Now, even though I'm here in Calgary, Alberta, these real estate principles will apply to most North American markets. And it's gonna be even more relevant if you happen to be in an oil and gas market such as uh, Texas. What I hope that you'll take away from this video by the end of it is knowing what drives real estate prices. Because if you understand that, then you're gonna know how to price your home properly. You'll also know the factors to consider when you want to sell in uncertain times like this right now. I'm gonna give you my honest opinion on the market and the things that you need to be aware of. And at the end, I'm gonna have some bonus tips for you so you don't wanna miss that. As a realtor for the last seven years, I believe in being honest and transparent. So I formulate a lot of my opinions based on statistics and facts, not so much the headlines that you see out there. If you're new to our channel, welcome. My name is Felix Shan with the Live Inner City Real Estate Team here in Calgary, Alberta. We provide our best tips and strategies for home buyers, home sellers, and investors. We also do community highlights as well as a home and condo tour. So if you don't wanna miss any of those, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell so you know when our next videos come out. Let's get started. To provide some context, I'm gonna share a conversation I had with my client the other day. Now, he owns a condo here in Calgary. He's moved out of town. It's currently being rented out to a tenant. He doesn't have to sell the property in order to buy his new one, but he wanted to ask, is it best to sell now or wait a few years? Now, before we dive into that, there's two things that we have to know about. The first is, what is the local real estate market doing? And what is the economy doing here in Canada? So the local activity here has been picking up. This week, compared to the last week, we've seen an increase of 20% in showings. Pending sales are also at levels pre-COVID. Because of these pending sales, it's gonna turn into the next week and the week after more sales. So because it's a lagging indicator, we're not gonna know the full scale of all the sales for another few weeks. Our team is seeing multiple offers, even in this market, with properties that provide value. I am seeing prices come down and sellers are being more realistic with their list price. They're not listing it for you know, tens of thousands of dollars more than the home is worth. They're pricing it right at what previous similar properties have been selling for. So they are more realistic with market expectations. And lastly, total inventory is low. And this is kind of our saving grace because it keeps property values steady. The second thing I spoke with him about is the overall economy. Now, I'm not sure if you guys have seen my previous videos about COVID-19 and the impact on real estate, but I mentioned that sellers are facing three key elements right now. The first key element is obviously the COVID impact. Now there's a micro and macro impact of COVID-19. The micro impact is um, buyers still a little hesitant to come out and see properties, which right now the trend is starting to go up. So that's encouraging to see. The macro impact is the economic impact on the entire world because most of the world is suffering from the same thing, which is very different than the previous recessions we've had. The second key element is oil and gas. Now here in Alberta, 25% of our GDP comes from oil and gas. So there's no doubt that the oil and gas industry will affect Albertans, even though OPEC came out saying that they're gonna cut 9.7 million barrels a day it's gonna happen over a period of two years. So we're not gonna see that fully take into effect until April of 2022. Now there's been estimates that the demand for oil on a global scale has dropped more than 20 million barrels per day. The third element is a recession on a global scale. Now this recession is very different than all the other recessions we've had. Even in the Great Recession in 2007, 2008 or so, there were parts of the world that 
weren't affected by the recession, whereas some other parts were. Nearly every country is facing the same problem. And right now in Alberta, for the month of April, unemployment rate has jumped to 13.5%. Now, just to give you guys some context, in the Great Depression in the 1930s, at the peak of the unemployment rate, it was at 25%. So we're more than halfway there. As a result, people are getting laid off because companies are doing budget cuts, they're reducing their investment, and it questions people's job security. So they're not gonna be so gung-ho to go out and purchase. So given what's happening in the local real estate market, as well as the economy, uh, not just here in Canada, but on a global scale, we have to ask ourselves, are you bearish or bullish on the real estate market? For me, I don't see very strong economic fundamentals to prop up GDP which by the way is the single driver of real estate prices, which I'm gonna get into a second here. So the two questions you have to ask yourself is this. Number one, what is your risk tolerance? What is your risk tolerance to potentially losing some money now or potentially losing even more money later? The second question you have to ask yourself is Whatever period of time you think it's going to be until real estate prices recover, and I've talked to people who said, you know, one year, three years, five years, 10 years, are you able and willing to stay in your home for that period of time? So should I sell later when the market recovers? So what we have to understand is what drives real estate prices? The single factor that drives real estate prices is GDP growth or gross domestic product. Now, when GDP starts growing, it means that it's creating some jobs. And if jobs are being created, then people will migrate to the city. If people migrate to the city, then they're gonna rent. And if they rent, vacancy rates are gonna drop. And about 18 months later, that's when real estate prices start seeing an appreciation. So the question now becomes, if you think the market will take about two years to recover, then it's gonna be about three and a half years until you start seeing real estate prices go up. Is that period of time okay with you to stay in the current home that you're living in or keep your rental property? We also have to get really dialed in on exactly what you want to sell your home for. In all my conversations, people say, yeah, I'm gonna wait a few years until it goes back up. Well, what does that exactly mean? Does it mean that you're looking for a $10,000 increase from today? A 30, a $50,000 increase? It's very important for you to know exactly what your exit cost and strategy would be. As an example, if my client were to sell his condo today, he would lose about $60,000 from the purchase price that he had bought the condo for. So his thoughts were, the market's gonna recover in about two years. So, okay, we're probably looking at about three and a half years until the market starts recovering. But is it realistic that it's gonna go up $60,000 in one year from the time that GDP starts growing two years down the road. Chances are it's not going to. That's a 19% increase given his specific situation. Those days of seeing double digit growth are long gone, at least for the short term. So is it realistic? No. And maybe your situation isn't you know, a $60,000 gap. Maybe it's a $20,000 gap or a $30,000 gap. Well, whatever that gap may be, you have to know what your exit strategy is so you can reverse engineer it and say, okay, given the time frame that I think the market will recover, is it realistic for prices to hit that level? Is this information helpful for you guys? Did I give you guys some key questions to ask yourselves and things to consider? I hope so. And if you wanna rewatch this video later, hit the like and the save button so you can come back to it when you go back into your YouTube account. All right, bonus tips. Okay, so here are the other things that you want to consider if you decide to keep your property. And in this case, um, if it's a condo. The first thing you wanna find out is if you were to rent it out, is it going to cash flow? Cash flow, meaning the rental income that you get, 
minus your expenses. So your mortgage, condo fees, property taxes, and insurance. Most of the time, the tenants pay for the utilities. Are the tenants cooperative in this pandemic? Some tenants don't want to show, and there's a law here in Alberta that prevents showings in a property if the tenant has been feeling sick or is in self-isolation. Another interesting tip I have for you is in a situation if you are selling and you are going to buy a new place, then pay attention to your payout penalty. Now in this situation, his mortgage renews in three more years and it's a variable at prime minus 1%. That means his net rate is 1.45%. Now he's moving into a property that is gonna be much more expensive. So the mortgage is gonna be much higher. If he were to get a new variable rate mortgage right now, the rate on that is only prime minus 0.2 versus prime minus 1%. So it's an 80 point difference, which is massive if your mortgage is gonna be hundreds of thousands of dollars more. So it's in his best interest to sell the property so he can keep his current mortgage terms and port it to his new home so he can see those interest savings for the next three years. Another factor are the risks that comes with owning a condominium. And I'm talking specifically about special assessments. There could also be wear and tear and normal repairs that you'll have to make to the condo or the home over the next few years. And lastly, how much energy do you wanna put into managing your condo? Even if you have a property manager, I haven't really ran into one that has amazing communication, great service, and is on the ball, and won't charge you an arm and a leg for some of their services. So sometimes you have to manage your property manager as well too. So what is the advice I'm giving my sellers? Now, before I get to that, I wanna ask you guys, are you finding this information valuable? If so, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because we'll be coming out with more videos to help you with your real estate journey. We also come out with videos every single week and if there's anything that you guys want us to cover, throw it in the comments below and we would love to make a video for you guys. And if you're on Instagram and you want some quick digestible info, follow us on our account at Live Inner City. So here is my advice for sellers. Given what's happening in the economy and in the world, I believe it's better to sell sooner than later. Right now in our local market, activity is picking up. Sales are going up, people are coming out and showing more properties. So you wanna take advantage of the pent up demand that has been growing from the last few months and sell your home for top dollar. The truth is we don't know what's gonna happen in the future. There's so much uncertainty. What if there's a second wave of COVID? What if the lockdowns happen for a lot longer than we expect? And if you're a buyer, it's a great time to buy right now. Now, my one biggest piece of advice for you is don't try and time the bottom because the truth is you're not gonna be able to time it. It's kinda like timing the bottom of the stock market. You'll never know you've hit the bottom until you've started coming out from that. And you'll see that through the trends and the statistics. So if you find something that fits your criteria and your budget, then it doesn't hurt to write an offer and purchase the property today. That is all I had for you guys today. So thanks for tuning in. Hope you learned something today. Um, my name is Felix Chan with the Live Inner City Real Estate team, helping you keep real estate simple, and we'll see you in the next video.